sparkling princesses, a rainbow of beautiful color. Each one is so special. special, they shimmer and shine like no other. Hello doll fans and welcome back to Beauty Inside a Box. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite subjects, the Disney Princess brand. I'm calling this video the evolution of the Disney Princess brand and dolls. Obviously I had to have a special focus on the dolls because you know, my channel's all about dolls. I absolutely love the Disney princesses, and I even made some notes for this video, which I never normally do, so that we can discuss in detail their glorious history. If you love Disney princesses and dolls as much as I do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here and like this video, and check me out on the social medias. But anyway, let's talk about the evolution of the Disney princesses. So first of all, a little introduction. Now, the first thing you have to know about the Disney princesses is it's not just a term, it's a brand. The brand consists of Disney's 13 most successful heroines. Jasmine, Rapunzel, Snow White, Mulan, Moana, Aurora, Cinderella, Pocahontas, Tiana, Belle, Ariel, Merida, and sometimes Raya at the moment, although I'm not sure how long that will last. The Disney princesses first started being marketed together in the 90s, but Roy Disney was at first reluctant to pursue the idea further because he believed that pushing the princesses together would weaken their individual brand recognition. It wasn't until former Nike executive Andy Mooney was appointed president of the Walt Disney Company's Consumer Products Division in December 1999 that he overruled Roy Disney and decided to move forward full steam ahead with the Disney Princess brand. A quote from Mooney reads, Standing in line in an arena for a Disney on ice show, I was surrounded by little girls dressed head to toe as princesses. They weren't even Disney products. They were wearing generic princess products. And the light bulb went off. Clearly there was a demand here. So the next morning I said to the team, okay, let's establish standards and a color palette and talk to licensees and get as much product out there as we possibly can that will allow those girls to do what they're doing anyway, projecting themselves onto the characters from the classic films. And the success of the brand was immediately apparent. By 2007, the Disney Princess brand was worth $4.6 billion. But before we can go into any more detail, let's go all the way back to the beginning, back to Disney's first animated film to see how the Disney Princess brand came to be. Part 1, Snow White, the first Disney princess. Disney released their first animated feature film, Snow White, in 1937. Before it released, people were calling it Disney's folly because of how ambitious it was. They said things like watching the bright colours for too long would give you a headache. And the project's budget had ballooned so much that Walt Disney had to mortgage his house to pay for the film. But, defying all expectations, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was a massive success. Disney and his team had worked really hard to make the animation lifelike and to give the story a more robust theatrical structure, which is probably why the audience could really relate to the sweet, innocent heroine of Snow White. After the success of Snow White, Disney got to work, probably whistling while he worked, licensing products based on the film, including dolls. And the dolls were made by companies like Knickerbocker, Madame Alexander, and Chad Valley, which I had no idea the toy company Chad Valley was that old, but there you go. But merchandising and dolls weren't as prolific as they are today, and the dolls on the market at that time resembled kind of babies and children instead of teenagers and adults. It wasn't until Barbie came along in 1959 that they started making dolls that looked more mature. Yeah, these dolls are very off-model. It looks like Snow White's about five years old, and none of them are wearing the right colours or the right dress. It's very bizarre. Audiences sadly had to wait until 1950 to get their next Disney princess fix with Cinderella. This film was again a massive success and revived the company after the Second World War, and Disney immediately set about planning their next Disney princess film to capitalise on Cinderella's success. Sleeping Beauty came out in 1959. It made approximately $5.3 million at the box office, but the budget had grown to $6 million, which made it the most expensive Disney movie to date at the time. It cost more than double each of the last three films. 
Because of that, it was a pretty massive failure. Disney decided not to make another princess film for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. Both Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty got dolls made by Madame Alexander once again, but these dolls look nothing like who they're meant to be. Like, I mean, the Cinderella one is okay, the dress looks nice, again they look like children, but the Sleeping Beauty one, it, is that Sleeping Beauty? That doesn't look anything like Sleeping Beauty. Where did the gold cape come from? And the short hair? Anyway, part two, Disney Princess Age of Ariel. It wasn't until the film that pretty much saved Walt Disney Animation, The Little Mermaid in 1989, that interest in Disney princess films was reignited. The toy company Tyco made Ariel dolls, which kind of proved that there was definitely a market for Barbie-like Disney dolls. It was after the success of The Little Mermaid and these dolls that Disney decided to go straight to the creator of the almighty Barbie, Mattel, to ask them if they could start making dolls with them. I absolutely love these Ariel dolls from Tyco. I, they're so nostalgic to me, they look so 80s. I love the bright colours and the big bouffant red hair. Again, she looks like a little bit young. I don't know why they made her look like she's a child. I still love these dolls. Part 3. I'm putting together a team of Disney princesses. The 90s were a incredibly successful time for the Disney company. They continued to create iconic animated films, and lots of those films had beautiful heroines as the lead character. But as I mentioned before, at the time most of these heroines were marketed separately. As you can see from these amazing dolls by Mattel, I honestly, maybe it's my nostalgia goggles, but the dolls made by Mattel in the 90s were some of the best Disney dolls I think that have ever existed. And even though I love the Disney Princess brand, don't get me wrong, I do love the fact that all the boxes and all the dolls were so individual at this time. I actually own all of these dolls. <laughs> yes. And I love them. I mean, gosh, it would be impossible for me to pick a favourite. Probably Pocahontas if I had to pick one, but right now, looking at them, the, the Esmeralda doll is really standing out to me. I just love these dolls, they're so great. But, throughout the 90s, Mattel did start to experiment with putting the princesses together to create doll lines. Like this series of smaller dolls, which was actually the first time they incorporated the word princess into the doll line. We have perfume princesses, we have musical princesses, and we have dancing princesses. The first set of these dolls came out in 1994, so it's just interesting, this was the first time they used princess in the marketing. And these dolls are so adorable, I remember having the Snow White dancing princess when I was a kid, and absolutely loving her. Here's another amazing doll line from 1997, I actually have the Belle from this doll line with me here, and I absolutely love her. I love the materials they've used. Such a stunning 90s doll. And this doll line was called Princess Story Collection from 1997, and each doll came with a little book. Again, you can see the branding kind of slowly bringing the princesses together. Each box is still a little bit individual here, like they have a different kind of banner at the bottom, but once again they're using the kind of princess, Disney princess headline. In 1995, Disney released the first Disney princess compilation album, which reached number four on the kids' music charts, and they also released the first issue of Disney Princess magazine in 1998 in the UK. I used to love getting the Disney Princess magazine, it was so great. All the little stories were really adorable, and I love the fact that we got to see the princesses in, like, outfits we didn't normally get to see in Disney Princess Magazine. And I also used to, <laughs> in the centerfold, they used to have, like, a poster that you could tear out, and I used to have them, like, covering my walls and the ceiling, and then in the middle of the night, like, a poster would, like, fall down for off the ceiling, and I'd, like, get so freaked out. Towards the end of the 1990s, Disney started to create even more doll lines, which incorporated all the Disney princesses grouped together. And I even found this doll line here. They seem to have two alternative boxes for the dolls. Like, there was one where they were branded individually, like Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Snow White, 
And then another version of the boxes, which I'm guessing came slightly later on, where they had the Disney Princess logo printed across the front of the Perspex. I just found it interesting that they had like alternate boxes and some of them were starting to use the Disney Princess branding more and more and more. Part four, Disney Princess Assemble. In the year 2000, Andy Mooney had ordered Disney consumer products to go all in on the Disney Princess branding. From here on out, pretty much every single piece of merchandise which featured one of the Disney heroines on would be covered head to toe in Disney Princess branding and using their iconic pink color scheme. But not all Disney princesses are created equal. There were a specific set of rules to get in to the Disney Princess lineup. Obviously, you had to either be born royal, marry royal, or perform an act of heroism. The last rule just basically means that Mulan can be a Disney princess, and basically any other Disney heroine that isn't a princess can also just join the Disney princesses because, like, why not? <laughs> the unspoken rule to become a Disney princess is obviously that only the most successful and marketable Disney princesses will be able to enter into the Disney princess royal court. Disney has to be certain that the character is going to make them money, or you're not coming in. At the start, the original Disney princesses in the year 2000 were Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, Ariel, Belle, and Jasmine. As you can see here on this essential guide. <laughs> and these Disney princesses were definitely the characters which appeared the most in marketing, and in dolls, and in video games, and in everything. And Snow White, Aurora, Ariel, Jasmine, Belle, and Cinderella were the princesses that would turn up most often in doll lines, I mean, still to this day, really. This doll line is called Sparkling Disney Princesses, and they're stunning. This doll line was made by Mattel, and these dolls are so cute and so quintessential Disney princess. And I think, to be honest, this kind of branding with the princesses looking sweet and demure, and the pink colour scheme and the sparkles are probably what most people associate with the Disney princesses. But I really like this line especially because the princesses are all wearing outfits that you don't normally get to see them in. And I actually have the Snow White doll and the Belle doll from this line. And I especially love the Belle doll because she's in her pink dress. And like, Belle doesn't often wear her pink dress. And Cinderella is in her pink dress as well. Again, unusual for her to be depicted wearing this. This doll line came out in around 2001, I believe. We also have this doll line, which was called Disney Glittering Princesses. <laughs> I remember these dolls really, really clearly from when I was a kid. They sold them at the Disney store. And again, we have the main six being showcased here. These are like really classic Disney princess dolls. These dolls I think came out in around 2006, I wanna say, but I'm not sure. I should have written it down somewhere, but I didn't. <laughs> they came with little tiaras as well. At the beginning, quite often Tinkerbell and Esmeralda would also be included in the lineup until around 2005, when they were both removed from the Disney Princess Royal Court. Esmeralda, because she wasn't popular enough yet, she couldn't sit with the cool kids at lunch anymore. And Tinkerbell got removed because she was too popular, if anything. Tinkerbell would eventually get her own spin-off line called Disney Fairies, and then eventually her own line of films as well, which were just called the Tinkerbell films. In recent years, since the Tinkerbell films have stopped being made, Tinkerbell has kind of been like reintegrated into the Disney Princess line. But as you can see here from these images of the very first doll line from the Disney store to actually have the Disney Princess logo on it, they included Esmeralda as one of the Disney princesses and Tinkerbell. I actually have this Tinkerbell doll. I also have the Belle one, I think. I really like these dolls. I love the materials used. I love the face sculpts. For some reason, Ariel's tail in this picture looks really bulky and baggy, like she's wearing a sleeping bag. But I also incorporated this image on the top right of this Tinkerbell doll because they've really given her the Disney princess treatment for this doll. She's in like a ball gown, she comes with a tiara. I also wanted to show you guys these images as well of the Disney princess magazine from the 
90s and early noughties, where they've also included Alice and Jane from Tarzan. You can see them in the little images along the right. I thought that was interesting. Jane was kind of incorporated into the Disney Princess line very briefly, but I think Tarzan wasn't as financially successful as Disney had hoped, and it didn't have the longevity that some of the other films. Um, I think another reason why Jane probably wasn't incorporated into the line was because she has a very similar colour palette to Belle. They both wear yellow dresses, they both have long brown hair, and the whole point of the Disney Princess line is that you're meant to find a princess that you can relate to, and if there are two that are the same, it's kind of pointless. But I would love to see more Jane merchandise. I would love to see a Jane doll. But Jane and Alice were never really official Disney princesses. Pocahontas and Mulan were apparently always considered part of the Disney Princess lineup, but they appeared very infrequently, especially through the 2000s. I remember finding it, like, incredibly hard to find Mulan dolls or Pocahontas dolls. And then it was only until around the year 2010 when there was a big push for more diversity and inclusivity within the line that we really started to see Mulan and Pocahontas be involved in the line a lot more. Here is an image from the early 2000s of a ballerina, <laughs> a ballerina Disney princess doll line. I have a couple of these dolls. I have the Pocahontas one. Here are some more images of the few times in the mid-2000s that Pocahontas and Mulan would be involved in the line. In the bottom right of this image you can see some Mattel Disney dolls from the mid-2000s, and I remember searching high and low to find Jasmine and Mulan, and it was so hard to find them. I'm not sure if that was just because the retailers I went to weren't stocking them, but it was so hard to find them. All the other princesses, easy, super easy, but those ones it was really hard to find, and I eventually found Mulan, and I still have that doll, and I love her. I never found Jasmine, though, which I'm really sad about. <laughs> Far too often in the mid-noughties, none of the non-white Disney princesses would be included in the line, especially in the doll lines made by Mattel. For example, we have this doll line here, where they are all dressed as ballerinas, and we only have Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White. And in this line, I have to say, these dolls are stunning. They're stunning. This line is called Dazzling Princesses, and again, there is only white Disney princesses. We have Belle, we have Sleeping Beauty, and we have Cinderella. And then we have this really cute little line, which is called Dreamtime Princesses. Here we only have Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, and Ariel. So I have to say, in the 2000s, I definitely agreed with the complaints about diversity in the line. Um, luckily, it's gotten better in recent years, but we'll get to that. In 2007, when Disney's Enchanted came out, Giselle was actually considered to become one of the Disney princesses. But when Disney found out that they were going to have to pay Amy Adams royalty every time they used her likeness in doll form or in any kind of media, they decided not to include her. Um, I think another reason why they decided not to include her was because she would be the only princess to have a live-action counterpart, well, at the time. And the film was, like, kind of a spoof of Disney princess films. But it is funny because Enchanted did usher in a new age of Disney films that were a lot more willing to deconstruct what it meant to be a Disney princess. In 2009, Disney welcomed their first Disney princess in over a decade when Princess and the Frog came out. Tiana added some much-needed diversity to the line, and also, I just I just love Tiana. She's absolutely stunning. Um, I love her big green ball gown. She doesn't wear it for that much in the film, but I also like her blue dress as well. I mean, Tiana has so many different outfits as well, so there's so many different looks for Disney to choose from every time they make a doll of her. And you can see here, she's been included in a Disney Princess doll set, and she has her own little border around her to kind of welcome her into the Disney Princess doll line. Soon after, Rapunzel from the Disney film Tangled was introduced into the Disney Princess line. Here you can see again, they've made another doll set which kind of welcomes her into the Disney Princess line. Now Tangled was an, another interesting turning point for the Disney Princess line because after Princess and the Frog had underperformed for Disney, they decided to shift their marketing. They didn't want to use Rapunzel's name in the title of the film anymore, thus naming the film Tangled, because they felt it was more gender neutral. And 
I'm not sure if you guys remember the Tangled trailer, but it featured Flynn Rider a lot more than it featured Rapunzel. They were obviously trying to aim the marketing much more towards boys, because they believed this would broaden their audience. But to be honest, I don't like that logic, because, you know, just because it's got a girl's name in the title doesn't mean that boys shouldn't be able to go and see the film. After Rapunzel, Merida from Brave was added to the Disney Princess lineup, and she made history being the first Disney princess to come from a Pixar film and not from a Disney animated film. And here you can see again, there's another doll set which kind of introduces her to the Disney princess line. Now, there was a little bit of controversy when Merida joined the Disney princess lineup because Disney made some promotional illustrations of her, which people deemed to be giving her the Disney princess treatment, covering her in sparkles and makeup and making her dress more low cut to fit in with the other Disney princesses, thus stripping her of her outdoorsy, you know, adventurous characteristics. All of these things, again, just reinforces unrealistic beauty standards, and also kind of strips her of what made her unique in the Disney Princess lineup. Luckily, Disney heard these complaints and addressed them, making new promotional images which much more accurately reflected her character. But remember this controversy, because all of these things were leading to a sort of rebrand for the Disney Princess line, which comes a little bit later. In 2013, Frozen was released and became Disney's biggest success story thus far. This film was everywhere <laughs> in 2013. It was inescapable. Everywhere you went, you could hear Let It Go being sung or played, and every single product imaginable had the Frozen logo plastered all over it. Frozen, again, being one of those films where they tried to make the name a little bit more gender neutral. The film is based on a fairy tale which was called The Snow Queen, but they felt that Frozen was a little bit more modern and gender neutral. I think it's a shame that the word queen would have to be taken out of the title. They're trying to make it more gender inclusive, but in a roundabout way, they're actually just reinforcing harmful gender stereotypes, I think. Now, Anna and Elsa are sometimes seen amongst the other Disney princesses, but the decision was made to exclude them from the Disney princess brand because Disney thought that their brand was strong enough to stand on its own. And this is still true to this day. The Frozen brand is completely separate to the Disney princess brand. Anna and Elsa are not Disney princesses, technically. Moana joined the Disney princess lineup in 2016. I love Moana. Such a great film, such a great character. And in 2021, Raya was introduced into the Disney princess lineup. I was looking online and sometimes she's included, sometimes she's not. I'm not sure how often she'll stay a part of the Disney princess lineup because that film was not a big success for the Disney company, so she's probably going to be involved in Disney Princess merchandise the least, but we'll see. Maybe Raya will grow in popularity over time, a bit like Sleeping Beauty did. Part 5. Disney Princess Licensing War. The Disney princesses have worked with hundreds of different licensees, but for now we're just going to talk about dolls, <laughs> because that's what I'm interested in. The official Disney Store dolls have always been their kind of own separate thing ever since the 2000s. And they're constantly changing design and, you know, face sculpts and stuff like that. Here you can see a couple different iterations of the Disney, the official Disney Store dolls over the decades. Some of them definitely more successful than others. The ones in the bottom right are from 2010, and these look kind of, kind of how the Disney Princess dolls look today in the Disney Store. The dolls made for shops outside of the Disney Store have been made by a couple different companies, like Simba, Jack Specific, and Bikin. A company called Bikin made Snow White dolls for a while, that was an interesting time. <laughs> but predominantly, they have always been made by Mattel. <gasps> Until 2014 when the license was moved over to Hasbro. They made the licensing move for a couple different reasons, but I think it was mostly to do with a larger shift that was going on in the brand at the time. Disney had been getting a lot of criticisms in the 2000s about their princesses not being good role models, 
and playing into damaging gender stereotypes. Barbie had been getting similar criticisms, so I think part of the reason why they moved the license to Hasbro was just to distance themselves from Barbie and also just to get a fresh start with the Disney Princess line. Mattel had also been neglecting the brand and focusing more on their own original brands, some of which Disney believed to be too similar to the Disney Princess line and therefore becoming a bit of a conflict of interest. For example, Ever After High. But, as I said before, there was also just a shift going on in the Disney Princess brand. I think Disney were trying to address some of the criticisms that the brand had been getting. And it's interesting. This is what a lot of the promotional images for the Disney Princesses looked like before around 2013. You know, they're all in big, sparkly ball gowns, they've got a beautiful makeup, they're all stood very demurely, very graceful. The colour scheme is very much leaning towards pink, and after around 2013, the princesses are starting to be posed in kind of action poses, you know, Mulan is like fighting, and Merida has her bow and arrow, and Belle's holding a book, and they look like they're running and jumping and climbing. And another thing that's really interesting is the Disney princesses have even been interacting with each other in some of the promotional images recently, which was always something that was never allowed to happen before. Before, to kind of keep this illusion that the Disney princesses existed in different time periods, in different universes, they would never look at each other. They would always be facing forwards, looking at the camera, never interacting with each other in all the promotional images. But now they're like hugging and playing with each other. I think this has a lot to do with the film Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. This was one of the first times we ever got to see the Disney princesses interact with each other in one scene in the film. But I have to say, you know, I like both sides of the Disney princesses. I like the more feminine, flamboyant, jewellery, ball gowns, and I also like the fact that they're strong and empowered and, and adventurous. I don't think that it should have to be one or the other, you know, people can be both. And another reason I think why Disney didn't want Mattel to have the license anymore was because the dolls were getting rather rubbish. So they went over to Hasbro. Unfortunately, eventually, the quality of the Hasbro dolls also started to disappear. And now we come to the present day where the license has moved back over to Mattel. And we have these dolls. I didn't really know where else to put this in the video, but Disney actually tried a couple times to group their characters in other ways, to try and replicate the success they had with the Disney Princess line. Here you can see we have Disney's animal friends, <laughs> and the Disney villains, and Disney heroes. I think the only line that has had even close to the success of the Disney princesses is, funnily enough, the Disney villains. So, in conclusion, what do I think the future for the Disney princess line will hold? Well. We've got images of one of our new Disney princesses, which is coming out at the end of this year, I believe, for the new Disney film Wish. And this film is going to incorporate uh, drawn animation and computer animation mixed together, which I think is really exciting. I have really enjoyed seeing how the Disney brand has changed and how the Disney princesses have changed with the times. And to be honest, even though the Disney princess brand does get a lot of criticism, for example, if the Disney princesses are good role models. But when people criticise Ariel for changing for a man, I always get so annoyed. I really like the film, but, uh, but Little Mermaid. I mean, the songs are great, but do not give your voice up for a man. Hello. Wow. She did not change for a man. She always wanted to be human. And Belle is a great role model. Like, she loves to read, and she's really adventurous. She wants adventure in the great wide somewhere. Mulan saved China. I mean, I think the Disney princesses are great role models, personally. But I think there is always room for more Disney princesses, more representation, more diversity within the group, so I just hope they keep adding Disney princesses to the lineup for the rest of time. I found it really interesting to look back at the brand and see how it's changed. Please, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. You can check out my Disney playlist down below. Also, check me out on Instagram and TikTok and watch some more of my videos, doll fans. I will see you real soon. Also, let me know who your favourite princess is in the comments. I'd love to know. Anyway, bye! <laughs>